Oh, uh, what's in the box? Greetings, everybody, and welcome to another video edition of What's in the Box. The videos where I'm forced to go through some old boxes that have been packed up for 20 some years that I've just kept moving from place to place to place where I've lived and never really had the chance to open them up and either keep them, get rid of them, uh, or like I said, keep them and display them. So um, my videos seem to be kind of long, especially in the Blu-ray collection thing. So let's get started. Today we have a prettier, bigger box than last week. Uh, I'll hold it up. You can kind of see it's a pretty big one. Yeah. <laughs> What's in the box? What's in the box? Okay. Um, hey, first off, let me let me just say thanks to all the viewers. Um, it's the fourth of July right now, early afternoon, and um, as of this morning. Uh, I'm up to 105 subscribers. I know that's not a big whoop de doo but in my life it's a pretty big whoop de doo considering when I started making these newer videos where I'm actually on camera talking to you, uh, I was down to like 75. So kudos, thank you very much for subscribing and watching my videos and, and giving me some great comments that I can uh, comment on and answer. And anyway, like I said, we're going to go through this and see what's in here. And anything that I probably don't want or I'm going to give away, I'm going to offer it to the viewers um, at uh, no real cost other than the shipping to get it to your abode. This is basically what I call, it's me giving my junk to you so you can have my junk. <laughs> anyway, let's go in the box here. What's in the box? I actually kind of peeked in here and it looks like it's, uh, stay open. It looks like it might be a pretty entertaining box. You know, let me, let me move this so it doesn't flip down, get over. And you can't see, but I'm doing this. All right, look at all this fun stuff. Wow. Yeah, I haven't seen this stuff in a long time. Okay, okay. Sorry, my back. <laughs> First up. Wow. I'm not really a gamer, but I guess I could say I'm a gamer because um, I grew up with the video arcades throughout the 80s. I spent many a, many a quarter and um, many a, many a paycheck just going from work right to the arcade and cashing it and give me a bag full of like $25 worth of quarters and I was there all day. Only now recently that have I been getting it. Well, I've been getting into a couple PC games throughout the 90s. The old uh, um, Alone in the Dark and Resident Evil and uh, things of that nature. First person shooters, basically. And now I'm, I'm actually right in the middle of, watching, uh, of playing GTA V on PC online. And uh, I'm loving that game. That game, I, I free roam games, I love. You could just go out there and do what the hell you want. Anyway, I'm wondering, one of those games I used to play back in the 90s was Quake. And um, KB Toys had these on sale, 3 for 10. Uh, these are the characters from the game Quake. Uh, I believe this is Marnie, Marnie Major. Marnie Major? I don't know if you could, with the glare, take a kind of peek at him. He's got a cool, he's got a creature here. Those uh, uh, whale, whale fish creatures. He's got a big BFG down here with some ammo and stuff. Anyway, never took them out of the box. You can see on the back there, there were a couple other ones that came out. Um, if you're interested, possibly look these up. I, uh, I don't know much about this. Like I said, my brother and I picked up a few of them. Looks like this is the only one that's in this box. Maybe there'll be the other two in the other boxes. Anyway, as far as I'm concerned right now, I don't want this. So if you would like to have this piece of junk, the, the clamshell is pretty bent, as you can see here. Probably from all the years sitting in something was, you know. But um, it's, it's yours if you want it. So um, shoot me an email if you want that, and uh, uh, I'll send it your way. Uh, <laughs> this is this. You remember what this is? Well, it says right there what it is. It's Tron. This is the old. Wow, well, I gotta 
put batteries and see if this works. I spent many a night laying in my bed before going to sleep. Um, yeah, no batteries. <clears throat> Back in the day when you needed C batteries, the big fat ones. Um, but this had like four different games on it. It had the bike game, uh, the cycle, it had the discus throw, it had you playing like kind of like ping pong with Sark, and then it had the MPC, MCP thing spinning and you had to throw a disc and get it in there. But it was all very, very simple, very uh, electronically uh, digit, you know, nothing special. But it even played like and very high pitched irritating electronical but and it's cool you can actually see inside excuse the dust that's on there and the glare but you can kind of see all the intricates in there the the board and anyway I'm hanging on to this because I want to clean it up and put it out on a shelf it's part of Tron's history you know um, okay let's get this out of the way I think I know what this is Wow this is like a Bible. Look how old. This is like the Necronomicon. What is in here? We'll get to that later. I got a bunch of newspapers here. They're basically all the same newspaper. They're already starting to yellow. But this was this was a part of my 15, 15 minutes of fame. Uh, I mentioned before, and I always seem to spam the Facebook groups. Uh, my buddy Tadio Garcia was in Columbia College at the time and he was working on a film project. I got involved with him as a friend, wanted to help him out, and we ended up creating this movie called On the Down Low, which went worldwide, won some awards, and is now on, on DVD through Image Entertainment. Great, great. There's even a feature-length making of documentary, fly on the wall thing that, um, that we spent a lot of time putting together, and it basically goes through the entire how we made it. Uh, it's very, very good. It's so, Well, the movie's good, too, but... <laughs> Anyway, we were in the neighborhood paper. There's lights, camera, action. And there's one of our, our two actors sitting at the table there, Tadio directing. I'm, oh, I'm back there too. I have like a Hawaiian shirt. Uh, I don't know if you can see me there. This is awkward. And I'm, I'm holding my little video camera at the time because I was filming everything on the set. Uh, there's Tadio, the director, and our cameraman at the time, Christopher Music. Anyway, it was a uh, it was a nice two-page article, pretty big thing, talking, and I got a bunch of copies of it here. That I'll probably end up keeping. I don't know who else would want them. You know, I already have that thing transposed and put on the website, and for people to read the thing, so they don't really need the newspaper. Anyway, what's in this little book? I think I know, but it's been years. Years since I looked, and wait a minute, I thought this was something, and, oh, look at all this, look at all this writing, this is, wow, oh, look at this, this is one of the first scripts I wrote, Black Mass, filmed by Roger Damian and Perry Flores, one of my childhood friends growing up, is there a date? Uh, oh wow, 11 2 of 1980. We were going to make this, this devil movie. Um, and I pretty much wrote the whole thing out. I'm not going to show you it all, but it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. There's a synopsis of Joe's death. I don't know if this is blurry or in focus, but anyway, that's really, that's all that's in this book. Wow, there's so much in here. Where's the, yeah, I even kind of like drew little, <laughs> not very professional, but little like how I wanted it to look. The altar at the end. It was kind of a, <laughs> two monks blocking the road with their motorcycles as the car's coming. Uh, it was kind of like a, our version of Race with the Devil. You know, it was a group of people going on a, for a lobster, a lobster and low and brow weekend out at the lake, Bass Lake. I believe is where we were going to film it, and uh, I think it was Bass Lake. We just never got around to making it. It was it was uh, it was at that time past where some of those friends that I were w dealing with really didn't want to do anything movie wise, so we just kind of 
put it on hold, but anyway, I got a nice little souvenir. One day I'm going to have to go through that and maybe transpose it and put it up on the website for people to see. Uh -huh. What else do we got? Oh, here we go. Oh, it looks like, looks like not too much in this box. Just a lot of clamshells. I was pretty big in the Movie Maniacs when they were coming out. And uh, picked up quite a few. Never really opened them. Actually kind of looked online. They're not really that worth much. I think like the bloody versions of maybe Jason and Leatherface um, are a little more high priced. They were more high priced when they first came out than they really are now because I think back then everybody was collecting everything. It, was, it wasn't like in the early 70s and earlier when people didn't collect things. They just threw them out and they opened up toys and they threw the boxes away. Um, but in the 80s and 90s and up to, to now, there's unless it's something very, very, very limited, it's not really going to be worth that much. Anyway, this is the Crow. You can take a peek at that. I loved the detail McFarlane did on his figures. Um, and I kind of stopped buying these when their so-called movie maniacs weren't really maniacs. Um, I think they just ran out of people. But they could have done all the, 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 the Cenobites. Um, anyway, I, I think I'm going to hang on to these. And probably do what most people do and hang them on the wall, you know, in its box. So, um, yeah, here's here's like an ad on the back of some of the other characters that they did. Um, but anyway, let's move on. Let's try not to make this an hour and a half. <laughs> okay, we'll get this out of the way. It's another clamshell. It's another McFarlane. It's at the bottom. What do we got here? Oh, this is awesome. And this is very dusty. Very, very dusty. Oh, I got a paper towel. I got a paper towel anywhere here. Let me kind of wipe this off so it doesn't look too bad when I show it off. Yeah. These were these were cool. And you know, I, I again money issues and priorities, you know, it's like, okay, I'm gonna stop collecting these and I'm going to move into just concentrating more on movies because I was running I was frankly frankly running out of room of where to put these and I didn't really at the time want to put them and I couldn't really because it wasn't a place of my own where I could put them up and um, now now I might but anyway this is one of the thing figures from John Carpenter's classic horror film this is the the beast at the end with the split head you probably can't see too much and the dog coming out of its chest and uh, it, it's just a really damn that glare and I don't have you know I'm gonna have to get like a, a separate light and that way I don't need to open the blinds to get the light in here because even with just the lighting I have here it'll be very very dark so that's why I've I always open the blinds, get fill the room with light. But it causes the glare, which really sucks. But anyway, this is a nicely detailed uh, thing. Clamshell is still pretty good. Corners are kind of upturned because I'm a dimwit and I didn't take good care of my stuff. Had to, you know, look at it. This is great. Oh, I got no place for it. Stick it in a box. Now I'm unboxing. <laughs> Um, this, I think my brother got me this for either Christmas or my birthday. Yeah, it was okay. It was, uh, I was disappointed with one aspect of it. Comes with the base, which I won't, but it's the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah, I'll get you my pretty, yes. Pretty nice detail. But, and, and it's the real cloth, and it's really kind of nice. Um, even has the little striped socks. You stole my sister. Why does she have striped socks? Isn't it the, the the other witch that got the house land on that hand? So she shouldn't be wearing those socks, right? I don't know. I don't remember if she wore those. Anyway, the thing I kind of did not like about it is the broom she had that came with it. When I got it, it looked like that. There's like no hay coming out. It either broke off or fell off. And so she's like holding a stick. Looks at him. 
putting it in my crotch. <laughs> anyway, and this goes up her butt <laughs> to make her stand. Anyway, this, um, yeah, this can go on the shelf somewhere. I'll throw this. This was on my shelf in my, my old apartment. <coughs> Excuse me. Many, many, many years ago. Um, actually, I do have somewhere on YouTube in my group of videos in the miscellaneous, there's a video called I Don't Like the Fourth or I Don't Like the Fourth of July, which I was kind of on a depressing mood and the fourth came around and I really kind of said my thoughts about, you yeah, boom, oh, ah, that's it, you know, you've seen one, you've seen them all. I don't get excited by loud fireworks, and although I do like movies where aliens blow things up, so, I don't know. But anyway, uh, in that video, the, uh, I actually am in my old apartment, which was a piece of crap, uh, but you could see I uh, some of the shelves I had, I had things, and I zoomed in and filmed little things. And uh, that witch is one of them. Anyway, um, okay, we can go through those first. But here, this is probably the last big thing in the box. I was at a convention um, and uh, saw this. There was a tiny moment in my life where I wanted to collect guns from different, not just for guns, but guns from different movies, like ray guns and... Uh, uh, you know, like uh, the Lost in Space thing, or uh, Mars Attacks actually had some toys that came out that had those really cool bubble looking with the light that zzz, 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 gak, gak, gak. Um, But anyway, I came across this one, and this was the Beretta, the Robocop gun, which is really cool. It's a, there's the back. Whoa. I'm going kind of slow so it could focus and you can kind of take a peek at it at the back at least there you go and we'll open this baby up I haven't opened it since I got it what did I pay for this I wonder this is a replica model, model suitable for persons over the age of 17 only to be used under the adult supervision uh, looks like the that price tag is scratched off. The gun is one of the most important objects not only in the action films but in the sci-fi films. A large number of well-known guns have appeared in this past sci-fi movies, such as Sensational Gun like this, however, has never been witnessed before. And they spell witnessed, W-I-T-H-E-S-S-E-D, witnessed. You see at the bottom there? I'm going to hold it there, maybe you can read that. It's kind of crazy. Um, I'm sure this is, yeah, it has like Korean or some kind of writing on here. I'm sorry, my nose is running. Uh, damn, I don't know why. Well, I can go into why my nose runs a lot in the video where I'm going to explain my lip. But anyway, um, let's take a look at this. Since this is going to be kind of a short video. Wow. I forgot how cool this looks. Damn. Wow. Look at that. Look at that, folks. Wow. Isn't that cool? Looks like, uh, oh, it's not spring-loaded. I don't know. Here's the other side. Pretty much same as the first side. Got a clip that... See if I could release the clip there. Oh, huh. wonder what what goes in these. Is this are these like pellets that are alive? You're coming with me. <laughs> yeah, I uh, got a safety button on it. Got some little knobs here. It's not bad. This thing, I think, pops up. Am I seeing it showing you right? Well, I'm not going to play with it and force it because I don't have the instruction in front of me. Here's the top of it. It's pretty nice. It's plastic. Uh, these little pieces here, like the safety and the... Those are metal. The 
trigger is metal, the clip is metal, um, and it comes with this in the box. Oh, there you got that. The bottom says, the fascination of M93R Auto 9 can never be compared with those of any other sci-fi guns. Its design is so in epoch-making, and its style is so idealistic, a sit will appeal to the collector's mind forever. I'm not making that up. Read away. Uh, hold it there. I can't see. Well, you can see that on, in the blue there, what it says. I don't know if, there we go, maybe you can read that. But yeah, they, they got epoch, epic making, I'm sure. E-P-O-C-K making. And its style is so idealistic. A sit will. A sit will. No, no doubt that this is airsoft gun. No doubt this is an import and they were trying to cash in on, you know, making money from the movie. Oh yeah, here we go. The bullets are little like toy BBs. BBs! <laughs> okay, um, so that's this. This is pretty good. I've never fired it. It's got a target on the back. <laughs> and it even says, Tarjay! But, uh, not a bad, not a bad little thing. The way it's written, it seems like they, they were going to release other guns from science fiction movies. The way that wording was, that, uh, weapons are, what does it say? What did it say? What is that in him, huh? What? What? Yeah, a large number of well-known guns have appeared in the past sci-fi movies. I wonder if they were going to do more um, guns. Or maybe they did, and... Let me put it upside down. And I don't know about it, but like this was the only one. It was way up on the shelf at the, at the convention, and I was like, Give me that, please. I want that gun. Okay, these should be fun. Um, might even bring up some memories and some stories for me to talk about. Well, I got so many of these, I'll just take them out one at a time. There was a small period in the, I think it was in the late 90s, early 2000s, when I started saying, hey, you know, there's some really cool, you know, I started looking back at my Hot Wheels. I still have some of my original Hot Wheels. They're probably not worth a lot, but if I kept them in mint condition, they probably would have been. But then I started seeing, like, Johnny Lightning, and, uh, they were doing themes, movie, cartoon themes, uh, frightening lightnings, these are called. Uh, this is, it's weird, it's got the Ecto-1 on here, it even says Ghostbusters Ecto-1, but yet the car is not the Ecto-1, the car is Elvira's Macabre Mobile. So this was a, uh, Elvira one. Let me show you the back. Yeah, they had quite a few. I'll just hold that up if you want to take a quick peek at what kind of is. I've seen these on on the internet um, on eBay going for mixed prices, you know. But like I said, I got them and I started collecting them. And it looks like most of them are right here. Uh, Here's from the classic cartoon show, The Wacky Races. Um, these are all mixed. Comes with a pseudo, pseudo film cell. <laughs> Just a piece of cardboard with that picture on it. But the car is cool. I think it's that Penelope uh, Pit Stop. Um, Penelope Pit Stop's Compact Pussycat. Uh, that's a good one. I love die-cast cars. Those are cool. Um... Here's Johnny Lightning Lost in Space, the Moon Buggy. That's kind of cool. What's in the box? Lots of little cars. That's what's in the box. Here is, oh, I got two of these. Now, this has a different, 
This Elvira had the Ecto-1 on the cover. This Elvira has the... They don't even say, but that kind of looks like the Munster. But it's not, because it doesn't have the back and the front isn't open. But this is still, this is a different color of the Elvira convertible. So, I got, I don't know, I got two of those. Maybe at the time I thought, oh, I got to get each color. Wow, I must have. Because this is the third one. <laughs> of Elvira's. And this has another little, this looks like the back of that. I've seen that car. I just don't know what they called it. But yeah, here's another color of Elvira's little macabre mobile. And it says $4 on there. I think I was selling this at a garage sale at one time. Because uh, I got all these from eBay, and I know they wouldn't have priced it like that on eBay. Uh, so that I'd probably put that sticker on there. Um, perhaps more of these fun little ones. Oh, my favorite car. Here's the Ghostbusters. Echo 1. That's a nice, that's a nice die-cast car. Look at that. I mean, they've come out with some really nice, you know, nice big Ertl, or I don't know what company nowadays maybe makes them, but the nice with the doors that open and stuff, and like the Back to the Future DeLorean and this, and they have like working lights and things. Those are really nice. But again, I don't have the money or the room to put them anywhere, so I can keep these, hang them up on the wall. Go, ooh, look, I wish I could open that. Here's da 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 Blues Brothers, but it's the sucky Blues Brothers 2000, isn't it? Yeah. Now, I don't know. The ad here is from Blues Brothers 2000. Hollywood does wheels, do wheels? On wheels. And Johnny Lightning. But the car could be the car from the original. I'm not sure if they had that on the top. The K9 unit. That might have been strictly for Blues Brothers 2000, which I never seen. So it could be from Blues Brothers 2000. This is my favorite, favorite design next to like the Batmobile and uh, oh, the original Spindrift, the Land of the Giants. Uh, it's my favorite spaceship of all time. I don't know why, but I just love the design of that spaceship. Anyway, this is the um, the Mean Machine, Dick Dastardly's Mean Machine. I love this cartoon design, and there was recently, well, not recently, good maybe five, ten years ago, there was a, I think it was a French car, a commercial, a car commercial, where they were showcasing the one car they wanted to sell, but it was being in a, like a race with all the wacky racist cars, and they actually had a full working one that looked very similar to the cartoon. Uh, <laughs> great fun, fun cartoon, fun tune I grew up with. Let me grab a couple more of these. So I don't have to keep turning my back on you. Um, here's another frightening lightning. This is the meat wagon. Um, just says the meat wagon, and it looks like it's a meat wagon with surfboards on the top. Kind of cool. There you go. Check that out. I'm not showing the back to all of these, but you get the idea. You get the idea. I don't have to tell you everything. And this is the... What is this? This isn't Echo One. Oh, this is Christine. Again, they're using the Echo One, and they advertise the Echo One, and they have authentic Ghostbusters photo at the bottom but yet they have the little pog Christine and here's the Christine car that I remember when I bought this it was kinda rare it was kinda hard to find the one that the Christine and it doesn't even look like Christine it, that, I guess that's the same car but the paint job isn't you know yeah just the kids won't know the kids won't know just put it out there and say it's Christine they'll buy it they'll buy anything this has a nice paint job on it, considering uh, it's like the original. Partridge Family Bus. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Look at that paint job. It's pretty nice. Chassis. Um, so that's there. I think we're going to have to start a new, a new thing, because we're starting to get too tall. Here's, oh, see now? 
Here's another Christine. Maybe I bought a couple of them in the different colors because they were rare. This one's kind of like a, I don't know, kind of grayish blue. But it's the same thing. You know, it says, uh, oh, it's the original Vampire Van artwork. This is the Vampire Van. Okay. And you get a little Christine hog there again. And you get a Christine car that's not the same color as the original Christine. Wow. I just bought this because it looked cool, I guess. And I wanted to complete the collection of uh, these frightening lightnings. This is the Heavenly Hearse. Check that out. There's the picture up front. There's the car. Not too cool. There's some surfboards on it. Boy, the 60s, 50s, late 60s, they must have been fun on the beach in California. All these hot rods, Big Daddy creating all these cool things. Uh, Oh, now here we go. This is the original Blues Brothers. So that was Blues Brothers 2000. This looks more like the one from the movie. Yeah, there's nothing on the top. <clears throat> the P1. That's good gas mileage. I don't know the line. <laughs> we'll talk about... Uh, we'll talk about... We did talk about Blues Brothers. Anyway, here's another... Is, is this the second moon buggy? Was the first one a moon buggy? Lost in space. There we go. Moon buggy. Stuff on the back. That's too small to read. Oh, we do got another movie maniac in here. Wait. Why did I buy two of those? Anyway. Here's the speed buggy from... Speed buggy? I almost said this was uh, Scooby Doo. Tell me, folks, is that from a Scooby Doo, or was there like a pseudo other cartoon where they were in races in a speed buggy? It doesn't say, but that sure looks like Shaggy. And uh, what's her name? And what's his name? Although he's not blonde. I don't know. And the back never really doesn't say anything about just a speed buggy. You can kind of see in the back. And move this. Let that focus. There you go. Flintstone, speed buggy, racking races. There's some other brands. Of cars they did, lost in space. Yeah. Okay. Oh, Stasky and Hutch. Husky and Stutch. Look at that. That's the, uh, oh, what they call the car? Did they call it something? What did they call? And there's nothing on here. It doesn't say anything about what the car is called. I know I have more. Well, maybe not, because I was just going to say, where's this one? Hey, hey, we're the monkeys. It's the monkey mobile. That's cool. That's pretty damn cool. I like the monkey mobile. It's a cool design for a car. I like the TV show. When we go into DVDs, we'll talk a little bit about the monkeys. <coughs> Excuse me. And, oh, there's one hiding here. Well, of course. We've got to have Barney's car. Barney Rubble. We've got to have his car. I'm wondering if I have more other places, because why wouldn't I have bought Fred Flintstone's car? Although on the back, where they're talking about what they have, they have the Flintstones and they just list Barney Rubble car. So maybe they didn't do a, uh, maybe they didn't do a uh, Flintstone mobile. And this, I guess I just picked up when it was when I was really into the movie. Yeah, baby. That glare really sucks. Oh, that's terrible. Austin Powers. Yeah. So anyway, it's a, like a little guy. Anybody want him? I'm going to keep the Johnny Lightnings right now. Some of those doubles I might get rid of. You know, like the, the extra Christines or the Elviras. If you want those, let me know. Just email me and say, hey, would you want to sell that? Would you want to sell... Or get rid of that, get rid of that. But this guy I'll get rid of. You want... Excuse me. You want a little Austin Powers to sit on your desk? I'll send them your way. 
He's still pretty good in his box. It's slightly bent. Slightly bent, but it's perfectly sealed. Corners are nice and crisp. Probably not worth anything. And last, in this box, this is the last one of this box. Oh, I didn't buy two. I thought I bought two crows. But this is another... Wow, look at the detail on this. This is another McFarland. This is Edward Scissorhands. Look at that. Damn it, Claire. Look at that. Look at those scissors. Scissor hands. Look at that outfit. The design on the clothing. His hair is all frizzled. Frizzle, frazzle, frizzle from. Time for this one to come home. Yeah, never opened these. There was a point where I was going to put them all on the shelf and open them and have them on their stands and everything. But I do know that dust likes to collect very rapidly on things that are not in like glass cases. And when you have something like this intricate, it's kind of hard to dust, you know, unless you use the ps -ps -ps spray thing. And I just don't feel like taking an afternoon out of my day to dust all my little figures on the shelf. I mean, I got a couple, you know, that, that I picked up, zombie ones from Dawn of the Dead, the original. And uh, I kind of keep up with them because I also dust the shelves with the movies. So they're always kind of, boy, I had a panic the other day, the, the Hare Krishna zombie. Those little glasses he wears, those are loose. They came loose in the package, and you just slide it on his head. And one day I was looking, and, and they were gone. And I, I was like, oh, my God. And I had just cleaned the day before, but I hadn't thrown out because, <laughs> you know, I, I, geez. I don't have a dust bin yet. I can sweep things, and I have dust, like, in a little pile in the corner. <laughs> uh, because I don't have anything to pick it up. I mean, you've not really all that from all the time I've been here. I mean, I've been using cardboard and things like that to pick up. But uh, I don't have a dustbin. Anyway, I thought, well, maybe the glasses are in there, because I just swept up. And I didn't have to look, because I was looking for a movie one night, and I just said, you know, I'm just going to look on the ground. And it was right there, right below it. Like, it just fell off, and I found it. Put them back on. I gotta get some of that sticky booger stuff that they use for the backs of the DVD uh, specs. Kind of like put a little boogie, boogie, sticky booger. But anyway, that's it. The box is empty. Oh, the box is empty. I could throw this box out and I could start hanging these up probably in my bedroom because I don't have much room here in the living room. Because up on top, I'm gonna be like putting. Like I have back here, autographs, and I got some a lot of upper that comes down like that, and I'm gonna uh, put more of my autographs up. And the kitchen is kind of small, but the bedroom is huge, and it's just all white walls. So I might end up putting. I know I'm gonna need another bookcase, so a bookcase will go in there, and then I'll probably hang up these guys, you know, up on the on the wall. And be like everybody that you see in the videos at their house. They have them all up on the wall. And I'll have to be like that. Yeah, I'm going to be like that. Anyway, guys. Uh, like I said, this is a short one. And there really isn't anything I'm giving away other than the, uh, the Quake figure. Which, again, write me. Tell me you want it. And the little Austin Powers. Yeah, baby. Little statue. Everything else I'm going to hang on to. If you want to convince me to send you maybe the doubles of the Christine or the uh, Elvira mobile because I have like three and two of those I might be convinced if you send me an email and uh, anyway uh, this is going to be a short one cool well not really it's 40 minutes oh my gosh um, anyway guys thanks for watching I need to shave tomorrow's Sunday I got to go to work I'm off today um, it's the 4th of July. Happy 4th of July to everybody. Happy birthday, America. Happy birthday to you if this is your birthday. <laughs> it's not like Ray Rayner. Um, anyway, um, don't forget church and Sunday school tomorrow morning. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Again, thanks. Big thumbs up from me to you guys that you're watching and uh, you're subscribing and some are liking. Uh, my videos and I just hope I'm here to entertain you. I hope you are, you're very entertained and um, I'll come back in the next uh, what's in the box and see what's in my next box. Okay? Yeah. 
see what's in Roger's box. I was originally going to call that, what's in Roger's box? And then I was like, no, why don't I just go the movie route with what's in the box since everybody says that. Um, so there you go. Everybody, have a great day. Uh, be careful out there. Don't be blowing your hands off or fingers off. And watch out for those loose flying fireworks. Don't get hit by those. And we'll see you in the next video. We got the D's coming up on the um, Blu-ray uh, defending my collection videos. And uh, we'll do another What's in My Box possibly next week. Uh, and um, we'll see if I come across anything that's really cool to watch. And I'll give me a little What's Roger watching review. All right, guys, have a great day. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. And uh, hope to see you in the next video. All right, 